Hello guys. So in this video, I actually want to show you guys how to quickly and efficiently remove uh, wrinkles and blushments from the face as well uh, at the same time also smooth out the skin. Uh, over here, I used the two sample pictures that I just grabbed from the internet quickly. Uh, it's the wonderful Amy Adams and uh, uh, I'm using those two pictures because uh, they are actually at different screen resolutions. So this one is actually, um, let's see, the screen resolution, the resolution of the image is uh, 2500, about 2500 to 1600 pixels. And the other one, the resolution is, it's actually slightly higher at 3600 to 2400 pixels. And the reason I'm using two examples is because I want to show you the effect or the difference between using a better quality image for the edit. So keep in mind, you always want to use the highest resolution possible when you're actually doing retouching work because um, that way the outcome is gonna look a lot more um, realistic um, when you actually output the images. So without further ado, let's just uh, go ahead and get started. And really, honestly, this is super simple. So the tool I'm gonna be using is a gradient tool. I'm gonna be using the gradient tool and the quick mask to quickly select an area on the face. And then we're gonna be using the blur tool to actually blur out um, the area that I want to smooth. And uh, we're gonna be also using a new layer. So keep that in mind. So let's get started. So first thing first is actually make sure you have the gradient tool selected right over here. And then in the gradient mode, you want to use the redial mode, which is the one that looks like this. And you want to select the gradient effect to be from foreground to transparent. Make sure you select this because if you select the other one, it's not gonna work. Um, so make sure this is selected. Okay, so let's get started. So once everything's selected, when you do quick mask, See, this is not quick mask mode. So we're gonna we're gonna quickly go into quick mask mode by pressing the Q key. So you can see when you enter quick mask mode, the layer is gonna become red colored. You can also quickly using the icon right over here to enter and exit the quick mask mode. So I'm gonna be using a lot of shortcuts. So, and I'm gonna be explaining to you what those shortcuts are. So as you can see, when I click and drag the quick in the quick mask mode, the area that I'm gonna be dragging and stopping is becoming red. So this is an area that you want to select to actually um, <clears throat> smooth out. And uh, of course, over here, those are the areas I want to smooth out. So I'm gonna click and drag around those areas. The center point is a starting point and where you end at the edge is where the masking is gonna stop. So using this method, I can quickly select actually quite precisely the area that I want to mask. Now, if you have a tablet pen, um, it's a lot easier using the brush tool with a pressure sensitive brush or the airbrush to quickly select the area. But if you are in a pinch, you're on a laptop and you don't have your pen, this is like the super quickest way to actually mask an image for editing. So as you can see, I'm quickly masking, I'm quickly selecting the area and making them red. And those are the areas I want to smooth out. Okay. So it might look funky uh, right over here, but uh, trust me, it's going to work very nicely. Now I left the nose um, actually unmasked because it's important to leave some sharpness details in the image, because if you, if you blur out too much, like the skin is going to, it's just going to look too fake and uh, we don't want that. So, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave some area that have texture behind. Uh, we can always go back to those areas and just add a very slight blur or the mask to quickly, um, to quickly get the effect that we want. All right, so all the area is selected right here. Um, at this moment, you can click the quick mask tool to exit it, and uh, then it's going to have the area inversely selected. Or you can press the Q key, same thing. So for now, I'm going to press this little icon. <clears throat> As you can see, the area is actually inversely selected because if you look at the border, it's selecting, it's selecting the area that's not being masked. So what we want to do really quickly is just the inverse the selection. So we go into the uh, 
any of those selection tools. So I'm going to be going into this selection tool. The by R, I can press the M key to go into this selection tool. And when I right click and just click uh, select inverse. So when you do that, this this area is actually going to be selected, and those area is going to be masked. So as you can see right now, the skin is uh, is all selected. So over here with the skin selected, we're going to create a new layer with the selection of the skin. You can do that by click Control plus J or on the Mac Command plus J, and uh, it's going to create a new layer with you know the selection that you just selected, and we're going to quit the background layer and you can see those are the areas that's being selected and we're going to blur that area and then we're going to create a very nice smooth effect to uh, hide those blushments. So again, select the layer that you're going to blur. I'm going to just rename it, rename it really quick. And you're going to go into filter and you're going to use a Gaussian blur and <clears throat> this is a standard blur that I use on a lot of effects and it works the best So with this selected as you can see the skin is already nicely smoothed out This is how you quickly select the area Now this is really important because depending on the blur or actually depending on the resolution of your image You have to physically you have to actually uh, use your best judgment to select a radius of the blur. As you can see right over here, this effect actually looks pretty nice. So it, it actually hides some of the wrinkles and then actually smooth out the rest of the area to make the skin looks really nice. And of course, this, this is going to look very artificial, but that's how you do it. And with the, with the right amount of you know, smoothness <clears throat> that you want selected, you can hit enter. So right now, as an example, I'm just going to do this as an example. I'm not even fine retouching it. But uh, with this area selected, as you can see, it's already making a huge difference hiding the, um, the area that you want to smooth out. So all the wrinkles over here is already gone. And uh, uh, as you can see, the nose I didn't select, so the nose area are actually kind of left over there just to leave some texture. But obviously, I've done this too much. So what you can do alternatively is actually change the opacity of the of this layer slightly lower, so you can have a more realistic looking effect. So you're gonna show some of the wrinkles, but then again, uh, most of the wrinkle is gonna get blurred out by this blur effect. So right over here. And as you can see, as I change the opacity, the blur effect also changes. So I'm going to, let's see. So just judging by my eye, I'm going to leave it over here at 90%. And then because this area still have some wrinkles left, I am going to actually further retouch those area by using a new layer and a slight blur um, to actually smooth this out even further. All right, so my cats is uh, going around. Okay, so let's create a new layer just right over here. Actually, nope, we're going to select the area first and then we're going to create a new layer from selection. So have this layer selected and then we're going to go to gradient tool again and then we're going to go into the quick mask, which is right over here. So as you can see, it's in quick mask mode again. I'm going to smooth out those areas. So I'm going to further select those area and I'm going to concentrate on those spots and just to smooth it out. Let's see what other spots we need to smooth out. Maybe this area a little bit. And so some of the edges right over here. And if you selected, you know, if you didn't make a good selection, just press Control plus Z to go back and then just reselect those area. It's, it's usually the quickest way. So, okay, so those are my final retouching point. Um, I'm gonna, Again, exit the quick selection of the quick mask mode. Right now, keep in mind this area is inversely selected. So you want to select the inverse by going to the selection tool and right click and select inverse right over here. So now, as you can see, those area are the area that I'm going to work on again next. With 
the correct layer selected, you're going to create a new layer for those selection as well. So press Command plus J to cre create a new layer from selection. As you can see, those are the areas that I want to work on. So again, I'm going to go into the filter mode. I'm going to go into Gaussian Blur. And with this effect selected, again, I'm going to mask and just hide those spots. And as you can see, now it's like super smooth for those areas that I've selected. I'm going to hit OK. So with this and the layer that I've created, as you can see, I've quickly hidden all the areas that I want to actually fix really quickly. Now, you can also change the opacity of the layer that you just created, the Blur 2. Uh, by going down a little bit so it looks slightly more realistic by not going super smoothed out. And uh, let's see. And I would say this is actually a much better image, you know, compared to what it had before. So like over here, there's a, like a small bump. We can always go back to just the original image and use the, you know, the spot healing tool and just spot heal this area and then boom it's it's really smooth or this little area over here so again photoshop cc actually does a lot of amazing things for you and uh, like this is just one quick way to um, actually get it work for you so we've done with the first image um, again what i mentioned is that because this image have a lower resolution uh, your effect is gonna it's not gonna look as more realistic as a image with a higher resolution. So we're gonna work on this next so you can compare the results. So, okay, so let's go back here. I'm gonna show you guys the before and after, you know. Um, so here is unedited and here is edited. So judge for yourself, like if you are a portrait photographer, of course, you definitely want those tools when you when you're doing fine retouching, the client asks you, hey, can you, you know, smooth out my skin a little bit, remove some bumps and get rid of my wrinkles. And this is the quickest and best way to do it. Now, um, of, because I'm demonstrating this for you, so I did it with the explanation. It took a little bit longer, but as you actually do it yourself and you start doing it, it becomes uh, second nature. It's really quick to do and super simple as well. You don't need any special tools. You don't need any special filters. All you need is a couple of basic tools. So the gradient tool, um, the quick mask and the blur. Uh, and you create a new layer and boom, that's pretty much it. So, okay, with this done, we're gonna go to this one and we're just gonna do a quick edit. And keep in mind, I haven't worked on those images before, so I don't really know what the outcome is, but I'm just gonna go ahead and do it and show you guys. So this one right over here, it's at 100% resolution. Uh, again, what I'm using is gradient tool. Make sure the redial gradient is selected and make sure it's going from foreground to transparent. Uh, I'll show you if you select a wrong uh, gradient, what's going to happen. So let's go into quick mask mode, make sure this is red, it's in quick mask. So if you use this tool, you can see it's not selecting a continuous area if you select the wrong gradient. And we do something else that's crazy, like it's going to select a whole bunch of crazy stuff. So make sure the foreground to transparent is selected. And uh, now we're going to start. So. Again, I'm gonna concentrate on the, just the skin area uh, on the face. <clears throat> Quickly dragging through. And I think this area is definitely gonna, needs a lot more work. We're gonna go back twice probably to work on the wrinkles in this area. Um, but for now, we're gonna just generally select the entire face and do a quick uh, gradient. And you can see, uh, like those area definitely needs a lot of work. Okay. So as we're going again, uh, usually I actually use my uh, pen tablet to quickly select the area. But again, I'm showing this for you guys that does not have a pen. If you do have a pen, it, it's much easier to make the selection. So, um, Kudos to you. And if you don't have one, just go get one. Um, my favorite brand is uh, Wacom. 
and they have the bamboo series which is for the the newcomers and they have the intuos uh, intuos series which is for um, working professionals so okay quickly i selected those area now over here i actually selected the nose um, we'll see how the effect goes and uh, later on when we're at the the editing mode we can always just erase the area that we don't want to be blurred uh, very easily and quickly so again i'm pressing the q key and that's a quick way to enter and exit the quick mask so i can always uh, just double check it to see if the area i want to select is correct yep that's about correct you don't want to select area that have a lot of details for example the the lips the eyes the uh the eyebrows those details you definitely want to keep there to make the image look more realistic okay oops okay so i want to select some of those areas just a little bit so again as you can see on this image i actually edited a lot more aggressively than the image um i've done previously so over here that looks about right you don't have to be super precise and the machine actually does does a wonderful job like uh, it's very forgiving like the gradient selection tool is very forgiving uh, so you can always practice and perfect your skills with those areas selected i'm going to inverse select usually i use a quick shortcut which is Control plus shift plus i and of course you can always go go back to using the um the selection tool and then right click but Control shift i is going to switch between your selection it's going to inverse select whatever you just selected so now we're making sure that this area is selected. We're going to create a new layer by hit Control plus J or Command plus J on the Mac and double check to see is the layer you want to work on. Yes, it is. So again, we're going to go into Blur tool and then we're going to blur this area and make it look really nice. Over here with the default radius, it's already looking like very smooth. So you can always get if you want a more dreamy effect, you can always go with a higher radius like that. Like that. So with a higher radius, you can create a kind of gloomy look. But over here, I want to show you guys just how to quickly remove the wrinkles and make everything look really smooth. So let's see. We're going to go with uh, just slightly higher, like right over here. That looks about right. So we're going to use, uh, again, those numbers really doesn't matter because you have to make sure each image you edit is going to be different. And this is also very resolution dependent. You, if you have multiple images have the similar resolution, you can keep this number constant for the desired effect that you want. But if the resolution is different, this number really doesn't matter. So also make sure the preview is on because if you don't have the preview, you don't know what the heck is going on because you want, you want to have a fairly precise look. Um, over here, as you can see, a lot of the area is already smoothed out. We're going to go back and work on those areas that I have uh, I didn't select very well previously. So that's no problem. And maybe I can also smooth out this area just a little bit, in a little bit. So we're going to hit OK. So this, this blur layer is actually what makes a huge difference on, you know, between between the wrinkles and the blurry uh, and, and the smooth skin. OK, so again, as we talked before, I always go in and change the opacity just a little bit so it shows a little bit of the background so the image doesn't look too fake because if you go over here it, it looks like just way too fake this is like super super airbrush so I always go in and just adjust just a little bit to make sure the skin looks nice so I would say like I leave this at 72 percent which is pretty decent let's see so on this blur, see, like usually I leave it at 70% because it gives a good amount of some of the details on the back and it also reduces most of the wrinkles. Okay, as you can see, there's already a huge difference. So again, as we talked earlier, like it actually blurred this area out slightly. So you can always just go in using the eraser tool, which shortcut is E. So when you go into the eraser tool, and make sure you use a good you could you use a good blend so we're going to come over here and just let's erase the area that we accidentally selected earlier so as you can see the difference so that makes the image looks more realistic so 
I'm just going through around and make sure like none of the extra areas outside has been selected. I'm just going to erase the the area on outside. See, if I do this, like it exposes the inside, but no, I'm going to go back. So I would say this blur, blur one is finished and we're going to go back, actually concentrate on the spots that needs a further work. So as we talked earlier, we're going to create a new layer using the background. Um, by selecting the area that we want. So right now I have the gradient selected by pressing the G. So gradient is selected and the mode is correct. I'm going to go into quick mask mode and then we're just going to select the area, the most problematic area. And after this, uh, should be looking perfect on the red carpet. Let's see. So, yeah, that's about right. I'm going to work on this area just a little bit. Okay, let's go back and check. So select inverse. So those areas are actually selected. Let's actually create a new layer from the selection and double check to see those areas are selected. Yes, it is. And uh, we're going to go blur those areas. And we're going to for this one, we're going to focus on actually just remove remove the wrinkles. So um, if you want, you can always turn on this layer and then at the same time work on this layer. So blur two. So let's just keep the blur two, the, the fine tuning area under the actually uh, first blur. So that way it works better. OK, let's see. So on this one, I'm concentrating on reduce the wrinkles. And because she have such deep wrinkles over here, it's almost impossible to actually smooth it out. So we're just going to try to make it look as natural as possible with the least amount of wrinkle. OK. Again, this is all to personal taste. Like this number really doesn't matter. Just get it to work for your client. And that's the most important. So as you can see, it's really nice. Now I'm going to change the opacity just a little bit. So it's it's kind of blurred out. You know, it's kind of hazy. It's still there, but it's not as pronounced. So we're going to leave it like that. And that's, that's my personal preference. OK, so what I mentioned earlier is that if you have a higher resolution image, the, the blur effect is going to look a lot more realistic than right over here. Um, the higher the pixel count, the better the effect. So if you ask me, are there any areas that could be further improved? Most definitely. Again, if you really want, you can get rid of some unwanted area. But over here, the spot healing tool is is most definitely not working because uh, for some reason it blends the area like too much. So let's try this a little bit slightly. Or you can use the, the mirroring tool, which is shortcut for um, S, so the cologne stamp should work actually better than the. Yep, that's almost, almost perfect. And small steps is always better than a huge, than a huge jump, uh, especially when you're working with Photoshop. Small is better. So that wrinkle is gone, uh, still there just slightly, but uh, it's not going to do much uh, to affect the final picture quality. So again, let's compare the the before and after. So this is what, what was happening before. And this is what's happening after. Again, those, those effects, it's highly customizable because uh, you can always change the opacity to make them look more realistic. Like personally, I I love the natural look, so I wouldn't go too much on the blur. But really, it's it's really up to you. I'm gonna create two snapshots to compare different blurness. So this is the most blur. This is some blur, most blur, some blur, and no blur. And uh, so, what do you guys think? Um, this is pretty easy, right? So. 
I hope you find uh, this tutorial helpful and uh, in the future I'm gonna come up with other tips that I think is definitely gonna help you improve your photo editing skills um, but I think this is the most important skill for any photographer to have especially portrait photographers um, to get you know the wrinkles of your client's face and again thank you so much for watching and i hope you find this video helpful if you did please do hit the like button if you have other better methods to share feel free to share with me in the comment section but uh, i think this is the best way this is the best method that works for me because uh, i can always uh, crunch out a whole bunch of uh, edits for the clients uh, in no time at all so again take care and uh, have a great day